Always great talking to my next guest, Walt Harris, who is back in action against Alexander Volkov coming up here at UFC 254 on October 24th. Walt, what's going on, man? How are you? I'm good, man. Hanging in there, man. Training hard. Yes, I bet. Uh, and I know you're watching some soccer right now. Who's your team, or do you just watch uh, all the soccer leagues? I watch all the uh, European leagues, um, but my favorite team is Liverpool. Um, I'm a Barca fan as well. I love uh, Spanish soccer. I support Barca a little bit. I'm a big Messi guy. Um, but Liverpool and the EPL is definitely my favorite league of all the leagues. Do you watch any MLS or no? Um, I do. I watch a little bit of MLS. I watch a lot of the uh, the action from the bubble, um, and I try to keep up with it as much as possible. Um, it's usually like my last resort. Yeah. Kind of, uh, you know, like late at night I'll catch the replay on Fox Sports. Um, but, you know, I, I'm a big EPL guy, man. Now you're going to Fight Island. Are you excited about this? Some fighters are like, this is pretty unique, and other fighters are like, I'd rather fight in Vegas. Like, how, how do you feel about the whole thing? Um. Honestly, uh, you know, I would have preferred to go over there without all this stuff going on in the world so I can kind of, you know, soak up the culture and take it all in. But it's uh, it's business, man. It's a business trip, honestly. So I'm just going over there to try to go get a job done. And, uh, you know, it's cool to go see the other side of the world at the same time. But, uh, you know, like I said, it's work, man. So I'm going to put in work and come on back home. Let's talk about your last fight quickly. Uh, what what a fight that was! I know it didn't go your way, but you were very you were like seconds away from finishing Overeem. Uh, you know the crowd was on their feet. Well, not at, at home, obviously there was no crowd there uh, before. But what did you take away the most from that performance? Because I actually think your stock went up. You were very close to finishing uh, an elite level fighter in Alistair Overeem. Um, excuse me. Yeah, man. I, I think um, you know, I just I just learned a lot about myself as far as you know. I belong in this division. You know, I can beat anybody in the world. I know that. Um, and, I, you know, being my first five-round five, five round fight main event, I know kind of how to pace myself um, in those big moments, you know. I think it was so much pressure on that situation just all around that fight, uh, with it being my comeback fight and, you know, the world watching. It's, it's, it's one of the – I think it was the second fight uh, back. You know, we were we were always sport at that time, so – the world was watching, you know, and I think that pressure may have gotten to me a little bit, but I definitely, uh, you know, realized that I can compete at this, at the highest level and I belong, I belong at the highest level. So I'm excited for this next fight, man. I'm, I got a full camp. I didn't have a full camp last time. So I'm ready, man. Yeah. And no easy fights in the heavyweight division. You're taking on Alexander Volkov, a guy who's very, very, very tough to finish. We saw that in his last fight. Um, is this the tallest opponent you fought? I was trying to look here cause he's a pretty towering guy. Nah, I mean he's probably about. I fought Daniel Spitz. Uh, oh, that's right. Yeah, Spitz is a bit yeah, taller. He was yeah. six. He's six 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 seven. Um, I trained with Deontay Wilder for years. I fought. I trained with Tyson Fury. Um, so tall guys. I mean, I've been in the amateurs. I fought six nine. I fought six seven. So like, it's not like a something new or unfamiliar territory. Um, I've I've been working with some guys this camp. You know, tall guys. So. You know, it's it's just another fight for me, man. It's just go in there and do what I do best, and um, you know, of course, be aware of what he does well. Um, I have almost, I have the utmost respect uh, for Volkov, but I'm trying to take him out October 24th. And um, you mentioned training with uh, Deontay Wilder and Tyson Fury. I had no idea when when did this take place. Um, well, Wilder, I've been I've been friends with D for six seven years now. Um, he's only about 30 minutes away from me, so whenever he would prepare for a left-handed guy, he'd always call me to come down and spar with him. His last, um, his last fight, I think it was um, left-handed guy was uh, Ortiz, um, and I went in and helped him get ready for that. Um, and then Tyson, um, he flew me over to London or to Manchester. I think it was about. It's almost been a year and a half, two years now. Um, when he was making his comeback, he was fighting a left-handed guy, and, uh, you know, my name popped up, and so he flew me over, and he actually extended my stay. I was supposed to be there for, like, four weeks. I ended up staying, like, two and a half months because uh, we were getting such good work. So, um, I, I, you know, like I said, I've been, I've been uh, in there with some of the best in the world when it comes to striking and, you know, just being big, you know, it's – it's uh yeah spent a lot of time with Tyson learned a lot from him um still keep in contact with all of those guys and uh 
you know, like I said, it's just <clears throat> I've been in there with some of the best strikers in the world, man. So at the end of the day, I think it's just another fight. His height doesn't really affect me. Plus, I play basketball, man. So, like, I used to guard 16 guys, 7-footers. Like, it, it's nothing new. Um, I'm excited, man, for the challenge. That's great. Did you work with any of those guys for this camp or, or just MMA guys? No, nah, just MMA guys for this camp. Um, I, You know, some Taekwondo guys. Um, you know, just to give me those long rangey looks. We got a six seven taekwondo guy in the gym. Um so I'm I, I told him, Don't do any taekwondo, I need you to mimic this and do this. So um just to kind of get the range down, you know, that's the that's the biggest difference. Um, you know, just knowing the distance I need to be away from him to, to be safe and, and things like that and then where I need to be to implement my game plan. So that's kind of what we are how we're approaching it. Where, how did you structure your camp? Because I know in the past you've done some training in Vegas at Extreme Couture. Uh, was it all at home base back in Alabama, or where, how did you do your camp? Yeah, so it was all at home. Um, we were supposed to go out to Vegas, um, but I got COVID um, a few weeks ago. So um, we had to cancel that trip, and we did everything here. And I've been training. Um, I went into camp 13, at 13, almost, we're about, what, four weeks out. Mm -hmm. I went into camp almost 10 weeks ago. Oh, interesting. Um, okay. Yeah, I started camp really, really early. Um, I got wind of the fight and I jumped right back in the, in the gym. So we've been grinding, man. And I've had, like I said, I had a full, full camp. Like I had really essentially two camps mm -hmm. um, for this fight. Um, I feel like I'm in the greatest shape I've been in a long time. I'm in way better shape than I was going into my last fight. Um, and so, you know, I'm just 110% ready to go in there and put on October 24th. What type of symptoms did you have with COVID? Uh, that, that obviously sucks. Man. Yeah, it was terrible, man, but it wasn't um, as bad as I thought. I was freaking out at first, mm -hmm. but I think I may have had a fever for, like, one of the days um, I was quarantined. I had to quarantine for 10 days, and I had a little bit of congestion, but I was pretty, pretty, you know, normal. I wasn't bedridden. Um, I just, you know, at night I would get real tired, and I'd go to sleep, but that was about it, man. I didn't have any, any bad side effects or anything, really. Okay, that's good. Ben, and I imagine you were probably off training for about two weeks uh, just to quarantine and all that? Yeah. Yeah, okay, I, took two, I took about two weeks off. And then I took, oh, actually, it's probably about 12 days because I um, wanted to just make sure I was clear. And, and, you know, I was back to, you know, I didn't want to take it back into the gym um, and get anybody else sick. But I ended up, <laughs> a couple of my teammates did get COVID. So, oh, no. When, um, when did this happen? How long ago? <laughs> This was um. It's been about a month now. Oh, gotcha. Um, so about, happened happened probably yeah. in uh, late August, September. Yeah, late August. So okay, yeah, it, it, it came out of nowhere, man. And, uh, I, I just was down for a couple of days and you know regrouped, and now I'm back. Okay, well, good, good to hear. Glad to hear everything's well. As far as training partners, uh, did you get to work with Eric Anders at all? I don't know if he has anything booked or who did you get to work with? Um, I've been in the gym hard with Eric. Um. Man, him getting some good grappling rounds. He's really good on the ground. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, me and him have been pushing each other every day. Um, and then, you know, my traditional partners that I have in the gym every day, Chef, um, uh, Cordarius, long athletic young guys that are, you know, pushing me every single day, making sure I'm staying on my toes, man. When you get my age, you kind of think you know everything. And then these young bucks, man, you're like, oh, man, you know, I got to, you know, stay sharp. So they keep me on my toes. Coach is pushing me harder than ever. Uh, we're training upwards of four times a day sometimes. So, um, you know, it's been great, man. And I feel great. I'm, like I said, I'm healthy. My body feels amazing. So I'm 110% prepared, bro. Excellent. How do you see this fight playing out? Because, you know, Volkov is very tough to finish. I think one guy's finished him in the UFC, and that's Derek Lewis. And that was kind of a last-minute uh, type thing. Uh, how do you envision the fight playing out? I mean, I see it being – I'm, I'm going to finish him. You know, I, I, I finish, you know – a real high percentage of my fights. Um, I don't always go in looking for that. I'm prepared to go wherever the fight may go. But I feel like, uh, you know, my skill set, he hasn't said, I don't fight like Derrick Lewis. I'm not going to allow you to stand in front of me and do what you want to do. Um, you know, you're going to have to deal with my weapons as well. And uh, we're going to see how, how his chin holds up to that. You know, I think a lot of the guys he's fought is just giving them the opportunity to kind of get comfortable. And I don't plan on doing that. Um, you know, so... We're gonna I'm gonna test him. And, you know, I expect him to bring it to me too. So that's what I want. I want the best Volkov on October 24th because the best he's gonna bring the best out of me. A win over Volkov, especially a finish. Does that put you back in the driver's seat in terms of your sort of road to the heavyweight title? Because I think this is a pretty uh, notable fight in the heavyweight division. Yeah, man, it does. Um, <clears throat> it does. It does a lot to kind of right the wrong of May. Um, put me back to 
essentially right where I was when, before I fought over him. And, um, you know, I just think that's a blessing from, you know, my Lord and Savior. I think that the UFC sees me as somebody who has a lot of potential in the division and they give me these opportunities because they believe in me. So um, I've been, like I said, training my butt off to, to show them that they made the right decision. Um, and, and to pay respect to Volkov, because like I said, he's a talented guy. He was a champion in, uh, in Bellator. So um, I'm not taking him with a grain of salt. I'm going there to try to go in to, to put on a show, you know, show the world that, you know, it's my time and that I'm fully back. I'm fully focused and I'm um, ready. Can't wait for this fight. UFC 254, October 24th. Walt, appreciate the time, man. I know you got some soccer to watch. Uh, just remind people where yeah. they can find you on uh, social media. And if you got any sponsors or shout outs, the floor is yours, man. Uh, yeah, man. I'm on social media. All handles are uh, at the Big Ticket 205. Um, check out my TikToks. I'm on there acting, acting crazy. None, none too crazy, but, you know, it's, it's dad talks. Um, and then, uh, you know, shout out to Drink HRW. Shout out to So Right. Um, my management team uh, over at Iridium, Jason, Jacob, I love you guys, and uh, all my teammates. Uh, James, you for having me on, bro. I love coming on. Thank you.